This is a one-to-one -one gear ratio. However, if we take a smaller diameter gear, for example with 12 teeth, and have it drive a larger gear with 24 teeth, the driving gear rotates twice for each rotation of the driven gear. If the 12 tooth driving gear is turned with 10 pounds of torque, it rotates twice for every rotation of the 24 tooth driven gear. It exerts 10 pounds of torque twice. This multiplies the driven gear torque to 20 pounds. This is a reduction gear ratio of 2 to 1. Now let's look at a drive gear that is larger than the gear it's driving. Here we see a gear with 24 teeth driving a gear with 12 teeth. For each rotation of the 24 tooth drive gear, the 12 tooth driven gear rotates twice. If the drive gear is turning with 20 pounds of torque, the driven gear is only turning with 10 pounds. This is because the drive gear is only halfway through its rotation when the driven gear's rotation is completed. This is called an overdrive gear ratio. To sum gear ratios up, when a small gear is driving a larger gear, it is in gear reduction and multiplies torque. When the driven and drive gears are both the same size, no change in torque or rotation speed is made. This is called direct drive. When a larger gear is driving a smaller gear, the driven gear rotates faster than the driving gear, but with less torque. This is an overdrive gear ratio. This completes lesson three of this video. Stop the tape now and read lesson three in your student reference guide. The manual transmission has been around for more than a century. While the automatic transmission has become more popular, many drivers enjoy the precise control of a manual transmission. Manual transmissions are also popular on vehicles that are used for heavy loads. For this reason, it is important that you are able to diagnose and service manual transmission concerns. To be able to do this, you must first understand how manual transmissions work. Let's look at the operation of a basic transmission. To do this, we will build up a simple transmission using basic gears. When a manual transmission is in first gear, the small gear on the input shaft drives a larger gear on the counter shaft. This reverses rotation and provides a reduction gear ratio. The counter shaft then uses a small gear to drive the first speed gear on the output shaft. This provides an additional reduction gear ratio and also changes rotation back to the direction of the input shaft. The first speed gear then drives the output shaft. When the transmission is shifted into second, the same actions occur, only the ratio between the counter shaft and output shaft gears are changed. In third gear, which is direct drive on our simple transmission, the input shaft and output shaft are locked together providing a one-to-one -one gear ratio. To get reverse, our simple transmission needs the addition of an idler gear between the counter shaft and output shaft gears. This reverses rotation of the output shaft, enabling the vehicle to back up. So now that we have a basic understanding of what happens inside a manual transmission, let's look at some of the components that make this operation possible. You'll recall that the majority of gears in a modern transmission are helical type gears. Since these gears are always meshed, all the gears inside the transmission are rotating whenever the input shaft is turning. Many of these gears are not splined to the shafts that they ride on, so they rotate freely as they are turned. To use any gear to drive the output shaft, the gear must be locked to the shaft that it rides on. This is done by the synchronizer. During operation, the gear and its shaft are often not rotating at the same speed. The synchronizer makes the gear and shaft rotate at the same speed using a blocking ring. This prevents gear clash during shifting. Once the gear and shaft speed is correct, the synchronizer sleeve slides over small clutching teeth on the side of the gear. Since the synchronizer hub is splined to the shaft, this locks the gear to the shaft letting the shaft transfer torque. This action occurs when the driver moves the shifter. 
This causes the shift rail to move the shift fork, which fits into the synchronizer sleeve. Let's look at the power flow of the M50D manual transmission that is used in many Ford cars and light trucks. In neutral, the engine drives the input shaft. This drives the input gear and countershaft input gear. However, since the three synchronizer hubs are centered, no gear is driving the output shaft and no power is transferred out of the transmission. When the transmission is shifted to first gear, the first and second synchronizer sleeve moves rearward and engages the first speed gear on the output shaft. This locks the gear to the output shaft, causing the shaft to turn in gear reduction. In second gear, the first and second synchronizer sleeve moves forward and locks the second speed gear to the output shaft, thus driving it at the second gear ratio. To achieve third gear, the 1-2 synchronizer sleeve is returned to the center position, then the 3-4 synchronizer sleeve moves rearward and locks the third speed gear to the output shaft. Fourth gear in the M50D is direct drive, so the 3-4 synchronizer sleeve moves forward and locks the input and output shafts together. This provides a 1-to-1 one -one gear ratio out of the transmission. Fifth gear is an overdrive ratio. On the M50D, the fifth reverse synchronizer sleeve moves forward and locks fifth gear to the counter shaft. Since the fifth gear on the output shaft is flying to the shaft, the output shaft is driven at an overdrive gear ratio. For reverse, the fifth reverse synchronizer sleeve moves rearward. This locks the reverse drive gear to the counter shaft. Torque is then transferred to the reverse idler gear that is in mesh with both the drive gear on the counter shaft and the driven gear on the output shaft. The idler gear reverses rotation and drives the reverse gear on the output shaft and the shaft itself in reverse. This completes the video portion of lesson four. Stop the tape now and read lesson four in your self-study guide. After answering the review questions, restart the tape and watch lesson five. A manual transaxle is used to multiply and transfer torque on front-wheel drive vehicles. A transaxle combines the transmission with the differential. The transmission portion of the manual transaxle basically operates the same way as a conventional rear-wheel drive manual transmission. Shift forks and rails operate synchronizers, which in turn synchronize gear and shaft speeds. Once these speeds are correct, the synchronizer then locks the gears to the shafts and power is transferred. However, transaxles only have an input and output shaft. The counter shaft isn't needed since the differential corrects rotation direction as it transfers power to the wheels. Speaking of the differential, let's look at why it is needed and how it works. One of the functions of the transaxle differential is to transfer power to the half shafts which in turn drive the front wheels. Another job of the differential is to allow the driving wheels to rotate at different speeds. This action is needed because the driving wheels travel different distances during turns. You see, during a turn, the outside wheel must travel farther than the inside wheel. For this reason, the wheels must be able to rotate at different speeds. The differential allows this action using gears that not only transmit power, but also allow for wheel speed variations. Let's look at how this is done. The differential ring gear receives power from the smaller output gear, driving it in a reduction gear ratio. The ring gear is attached to the carrier assembly. The carrier is a housing that contains the side gears, which attach to the half shafts, and the pinion gears, which ride on the pinion shaft. When the vehicle is driving straight ahead, the ring gear drives the carrier. This transfers power to the pinion gear set, which, as long as both wheels have the same amount of traction, transmits the power equally to the side gears and through them to the half shafts and wheels. However, once a vehicle enters a turn, the outside wheel must travel faster while the inside wheel must travel slower. This action is allowed because the pinion gears can rotate on their shaft. 
The pinion gear rotation allows the side gear on the outside wheel to rotate faster than the carrier, while the wheel on the inside is rotating slower 